This conference will now be recorded. Hi, good evening all. Um, once again, thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, very warm welcome to our guest speaker, Mr. Syed. Uh, I'm Vijay Narayanan, VP Professional Development of the PMI Chennai chapter, and I will be your host for this session. This is the 10th webinar in the series of webinars since the lockdown. Now, once again, I wish to extend my sincere thanks to all chapter members for supporting the webinar series, joining us in large numbers for every session. I mean, without your participation, this webinar series would simply not exist. So we're extremely grateful for your support. As always, a few quick housekeeping announcements, especially for those of you who are joining this webinar series for the first time. Please can I request everyone other than the speaker to be on mute throughout this session. Also, please turn off your video for a better webinar experience. One PDU will be processed to all attendees of this session. In case you have not received your PDU for the earlier sessions, please do get in touch with me. I will share a link to a feedback form for this session on the chat window later during the webinar. Please fill and submit this form so that your PDU can be processed without any delay. If you have any questions for the speaker, please post them on the chat window during the session and we will cover them in the Q&A section at the end. Right, let's get into the session. The topic for today's session is Disciplined Agile. Wow, your way of working. And it's going to be presented by Mr. Syed. Mr. Syed Razik is the president of PMI Chennai chapter. He brings over 21 years of experience leading product development and digital transformation projects in the SMAC segment. Syed is an Agile coach at Altimetric, and he heads the Agile Center of Excellence. He's a certified PMP since 2004, PMI ACP since 2014, and a safe Agilist since 2018. Syed currently heads Agile transformation for the global top three banks in the world. He heads the social media task force for PMI India. He is an adjunct professor for the PGPX program on project management and agile practices for IIM Rotak. He has had several international speaking assignments with PMI across Hong Kong, Penang, Bali, Istanbul, Colombo, and Pan India. Recently, at the start of 2020, Syed was the project sponsor for a team of volunteers at PMI Chennai who authored, designed, created, and published the first Tamil book on project management concepts for school students called Tittamidu Vetriperu and is available on Amazon Kindle. Well, how can the disciplined agile toolkit solve the challenges faced by the product teams who adopt a particular agile practice? Is disciplined agile a panacea that will help tackle all the agile problems in the current practices? Let's listen to Syed one of the very few certified instructors on disciplined agile and its way of working in India. So without further ado, it's our pleasure to welcome our chapter president and a multifaceted guest speaker, Mr. Syed, to this webinar. Over to you, Syed. Thanks, Vijay. Um, so good evening, everybody. Um, since the lockdown, this is the first time I am coming online and I see this as a privilege to connect with members and uh, on a forum. Um, of course, uh, there have been a lot of occasions where uh, I was on the audience uh, sector, but we never got to interact uh, very, you know, uh, very much. So, um, so today um, we will be talking about wow, your way of working, and this is more to do with you know. Uh, as the introduction which uh, Vijay gave, um, it's about disciplined agile. Disciplined agile is a, a recent, uh, you know, uh, addition to uh, what PMI is offering to its member community, and it's more to do with agile. And let's look at how is it different. What does you know disciplined agile bring to the table, and uh, how is it different from uh, whatever is being offered in the market, number one. Number two, um, is Disciplined Agile going to phase out ACP? Many of you might have these kind of doubts. And this session will be you know, addressing all that 
first thing it will be a primer that will let you know what is disciplined agile and then we will go ahead and talk about the other issues okay with that let me start the agenda is you know what is disciplined agile why disciplined agile we will have a bit of an overview about that and then we will talk about choosing your wow wow is way of working okay and uh, so what is disciplined agile right uh, disciplined agile was something that came into the pmi family um, in 2019 and it provides guidance to help organizations choose their way of working in a very context sensitive manner providing a solid foundation for business agility okay unlike other uh, you know uh, methodologies which are there uh, for example if you um if many most of you must be familiar with uh, the agile landscape right uh, just to give you an idea uh, there are at least 236 certifications in agile across the world and it's so chaotic okay and among them um 80 percent of um you know the organizations um seem to be adopting scrum 80 percent and uh, this is from a survey that was conducted uh, for the state of agile survey and uh, this survey is conducted across third 3000 leading organizations practicing agile and the results show that 80% is scrum and uh, related uh, hybrids like scrum ban scrum but and all that and then the rest of them are following lean methodology and a little bit of disciplined agile and so on but the there are um, agile is not a cakewalk okay agile uh, has its own restrictions uh, what we call as a method prism okay you are stuck to a way of working and um, it you know usually doesn't help you um, more on uh, delivering the solutions so something was lacking that's where you know da comes into place da doesn't look at uh, you know the all the agile tools and practices as a methodology rather in da it's a toolkit a toolkit of agile strategies and practices that meant any agile framework or method such as scrum or safe okay so what what pmi has done with this offering is they have made existing agile practices easier by telling that there is a prescriptive toolkit which is available you can pick up tools from this and you don't have to rework your entire agile practice rather use the toolkit to enhance your existing practice and that's where disciplined agile helps a lot okay and let me set the uh, context of uh, what is happening today right in today uh, the market conditions are very dynamic the businesses are you know um, uh, able to adapt to changes are the only businesses that are surviving you should have seen the uh, the covid situation right and um, you need to change at a faster pace you should be able to scale you should be able to stay competitive okay and uh, and uh, very important you should be responding faster to evolving customer needs right and that is a no-brainer today and everybody talks about customer centricity and not not only being customer centric they talk a lot about delighter being a customer delighter and providing customized solutions uh, to um, you know uh, across across to your uh, you know um, uh, across the organization and we need to build awesome teams that will work very nimbly and 
that work in small increments and they leverage technology uh, as a strategic enabler. So with that as a context, let me go into why and how disciplined agile it will stay relevant in this scenario, right? So if you look at the current landscape, right? It's a total chaos and there are various methodologies from each methodology we are getting some, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, small practices. For example, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, a methodology like what Spotify has, Spotify talks about guilds. Spotify talks about, uh, um, you know, um, uh, different practices, right? Similarly, if you talk about SAFE, SAFE talks about program increments. SAFE talks about value stream mapping. And if you go into XP methodology, they talk about test-driven development and uh, behavior-driven development, right? Uh, across in Scrum, we talk about uh, user stories. We talk about, um, you know, stand-ups, um, basically stand-up calls and all that, right? So chaotic. How do you, um, you know, um, wherever you go, there is a significant gap and uh, people are uh, you know looking at how we can approach this particular part right that is where disciplined agile delivery uh, addresses right it it is a people first learning oriented hybrid uh, agile approach to it solution delivery it has a risk free risk value delivery life cycle and is goal driven enterprise aware and is scalable okay that is that is one place where it stands apart and when we talk about disciplined agile every practice that is there within agile becomes a part of the toolkit and uh, oh, the overall umbrella happens to be da and the entire uh, landscape takes care of that uh, when to use what is all that is uh, being picked about. And then what uh, what Disciplined Agile talks about is every organization has this unique set of problems. One size doesn't fit all. So what they say is you need to evolve your way of working. Okay. They basically, DA enables teams to choose their way of working. Why do you need disciplined agile, right? Um, so, so that's that's one question that everybody might have. Um, if you look at uh, you know what PMI offers, uh, PMI uh, gives a lot of uh, uh, you know importance to uh, waterfall-based projects with with the PMP in place for the last 50 years, and uh, we have more than a million. Um, uh, people who are certified uh, PMPs um, across the world, right? And they focus on um, one particular book, that is the PM Book of Knowledge. And uh, the, now, now we uh, PMI has brought discipline, the agile, also into its fold. And off late for the last six, seven years, agile has become one of the um, you know uh, knowledge areas that are within um, within the PMP uh, offering that is there, right? And uh, come 2021, the the weighted that will be given to Agile in uh, PMP certification is increasing. That uh, that is a clear indication that across the world, adoption of Agile is increasing. And uh, that is one place where, you know, uh, you will find that uh, we are, you know, offering not just an ACP. ACP was the only offering that was provided by PMI. Now with Disciplined Agile, we are bringing in a clear guidance on how to handle risk management and governance within uh, Agile, right? So it's time, 
it is a time to up your agile game organizations are getting weary with proprietary and inflexible methods requiring expensive training and consulting support so as i was telling you earlier right today in the market there are around 236 certifications in agile okay and it's so exa exhaustive in nature and then over the years we we have you know become very fragmented and there are a lot of questionable certification schemes now with da uh, that to offered by pmi a professional approach to um, um you know how mindful and scope agile can be practiced and along with the community support you are able to do this the objective is um, you know to have um, a niche across uh, the various areas. Um, already uh, to give you a, a fair, um, you know, exposure to the history of Agile, um, the Agile Manifesto was drawn in 2001. And uh, informally, you know, it existed in methods such as Scrum, Extreme Programming, and these were all practiced even before uh, you know, in the mid 90s, still we were struggling. Still, when it comes to an agile implementation, uh, teams were struggling. Uh, teams were not able to drive, uh, you know, uh, implementation properly, or teams felt constrained by the method. And uh, this is what we call as a method prism, um, method prism, right? And uh, we have been always looking for a unifying body that can bring cohesion to the industry and i think with disciplined agile in place pmi should be able to achieve this let me give you an overview about uh, you know uh, disciplined agile in the core of uh, you know disciplined agile uh, is the mindset the mindset is uh, over encompassing and um, uh, it it is comprised of principles and guidelines basically uh, disciplined agile is a hybrid toolkit and it builds up across you know the solid foundation of other methods and uh, software uh, process frameworks it adopts strategies in place and also uh, it picks up from existing sources provides advice and applies them together and how we approach it is there are uh, life cycles which are there there are workflows which are there which are part of the flow and uh, the three quadra uh, three um, tangents are uh, flow practices practices are more to do with process goals and goal diagrams and the people side uh, there are some increased roles, agile roles that have come into place. As you know, if you are, you know, practicing Scrum or practicing simple agile techniques in your teams, there are only three prescribed primary roles. One is you can be a Scrum master, two, you can be a product owner, or you can be a team member. These are the three possible roles when it comes to a simple agile team right with disciplined agile we have increased the roles and responsibilities newer roles have come into place and team structures have also uh, you know evolved and um, so we will look at that in the later slides so that is on the people part on the practice part uh, we have created what is called as process blades we will talk about process blades in the later slides and basically what we have done is every organ every organization today has a focus on delivering agile only on its it software development engineering practice and all that right but for an organization to be agile it is not enough just if your development team is agile you need to make your rest of the departments like your marketing your finance your uh, uh, hr uh, agile right only then you can talk about agile and today 
enterprise transformation is the key in thing uh, that is in the market and to do that you don't need a methodology if uh, for example uh, you know if i pick up uh, let's say a scrum methodology and go and talk to a hr team or a finance team and say hey implement scrum it will not be relevant at all right but when you look at this as a toolkit and you pick up only the good things or things that suit you which is the way of working and you leave the rest that then it makes a lot of sense and that's what the approach is with disciplined agile right governing disciplined agile is these seven principles okay and um, by now i i think many of you would have had the question right what is why disciplined agile what is discipline and disciplined agile right so basically discipline and agile is about being able to focus on uh, you know delighting customers creating awesome teams okay and, and ensuring that you know um, having a list of choices choice is good right and whatever is relevant for somebody um, might whatever is practiced by somebody might not be relevant for you right so being contextual in nature and visualizing and optimizing the flow of work which is uh, also a part of it and whatever you do you should have an enterprise consciousness right and uh, when you do all this together these are the seven principles that govern disciplined agile today uh, you know organizations are uh, very complex in nature and um, you find that there is a lot of dynamics across teams across boundaries across departments and to handle such a complex adaptive uh, system you need to have a, a method in place and that is what you know uh, a toolkit would be able to help you with as i was telling you earlier right uh, within discipline agile we have brought newer roles in place and these roles happen to be that you know uh, that you could add a lean scrum master um, you could add an architect owner uh, these are all new roles apart from uh, the regular which is the product owner uh, and you know um, you could have a project manager a project manager is from the perspective of you know a person who handles the financial parts of the entire project we take care of that and uh, then there are enterprise roles there are roles which are related to the different departments right and that is also being uh, defined within discipline agile so with that first let me talk about um, you know um, i was telling about process blades right what is a process blade and uh, a process blade is basically uh, just like what you see uh, in a server right server you call it as a blade server and here a process blade is a collection of process options and it is a, it is a practice sometimes it is a strategy and when it is applied to a certain context and it starts behaving in a certain manner and this is a specific capability like for example here you have something called data management within discipline devops right or an it operations each is a process blade on its own the thinking is that you know um, a blade server you can deploy it and uh, you can configure it for your own purpose and when its use is done you can replace it entirely with little or no impact and that is the approach that is there in uh, da itself right so 
if you want to bring agility and if you feel one particular area requires some practices in place deploy them adopt to it and uh, bring efficiency into the system once you find that uh, you know you are up to speed you can pull it out or you can replace it with some something else and if you look at this entire diagram uh, this is more like an agile onion and uh, the innermost core is what is called the disciplined agile delivery and it has six life cycles in place one is the pure agile life cycle then there is a continuous delivery agile life cycle so what is the difference between an agile life cycle and a continuous delivery life cycle is that in an agile life cycle you will start with a product backlog you will do with sprint planning and um, you will do your entire sprint finish it with sprint review and a retrospective at the end of that you will be delivering a product right but um, in continuous delivery we talk about what happens beyond delivery beyond you know once the product has been delivered it also needs to be serviced right it also needs to be serviced and if there are um, uh, you know improvements or uh, a version 2.0 that you want to plan you need a lot of inputs from your customers customers are going to raise a lot of complaints if there are repairs and you need to take care of that and for that continuous delivery agile helps you similarly if you are on a devops uh, kind of an environment continuous delivery lean helps you and if you are trying to do a project which is purely exploratory in nature again there is a separate life cycle for that similarly if you are on an enterprise level adoption of agile then you would require a program life cycle not just one single product a collection of projects together right so a program approach is also there this forms the inner inner layer of this onion and uh, the next layer is called the discipline devops which come comprises of data management it operations uh, release management security and support each is a process blade on its own and above that at the top level is um, you know disciplined agile it and this is very focused on it and you have around you know eight of them uh, continuous improvement enterprise architecture um, people management portfolio management and uh, uh, it governance reuse in engineering so on right and incidentally the ones at the top uh, are also applicable for enterprises if within enterprise uh, which is disciplined agile for enterprise we talk a lot about how we can apply certain toolkits uh, you know certain tools from the toolkit da toolkit for business operations and if we can apply certain tools from the toolkit for uh, finance and uh, similarly you can do the same with uh, you know legal you can do it with marketing you can do this with uh, procurement and also with sales so for each of them there are certain tools which are relevant and these are guided by uh, da okay uh, these are guided tools like it's not like you pick up a tool and uh, you try to fit and see whether it is relevant it's not like that there is a guidance that is provided by da and they say these are the list of tools that will be relevant to this particular uh, process blade and once that guidance is given among that guidance um, you know there is a priority that is given saying that this is the top priority uh, among these tools for that particular process blade and uh, that indication tells you whether you can pick it up whether it is the most favored tool and try to apply it if it doesn't work you can drop it after you assess the effectiveness and you can pick up another tool and try to use it 
so this is what is very core to uh, you know disciplined agile and if you were to ask me what are the three most important things uh, that disciplined agile uh, works on the first thing is looking at you know um, uh, this entire agile uh, practice as not as a framework but as a toolkit that is the single most um, biggest advantage of da the second thing is looking at process blades and looking at how the process blade can help you um, you know um, structure your way of working wow right um, see uh, uh, i think we connected on that so the wow uh, uh, for every organization uh, the way of working might be different the set of tools from the toolkit that you apply might not be relevant for somebody else. So, so the wow is the second most advantageous thing. The third most advantageous thing is what we call as guided continuous improvement. Okay, there is a lot of guidance which is given by DA on how you should improve, and this comes from the original school of thought. Uh, in lean methodology, what we call as Kaizen. And we will talk about Kaizen and how, uh, you know, guided continuous improvement is impacting, uh, you know, um, organizations and teams uh, in DA in our later slides. Just a second. So, okay. So um, we talked about, you know, the six life cycles which are uh, core and so if you were to you know uh, if you come from an agile practice or let's say you are adopting scrum then you are stuck to only one method right but in a da you have the option of picking and choosing from six life cycles okay six life cycles are available and based on what is relevant or contextual to your organization you can pick up a life cycle number one number two can i you know i have already picked the life cycle can i pick another one within my team the answer is yes and uh, let's say uh, for a few months you tried a particular life cycle and it worked for you and now you are in a different mode like for example you are now have already developed a product now you need to go into service can i drop a life cycle and pick up something else the answer is yes and that freedom is something which is very distinguishable in a, a da toolkit right and so there are six life cycles for you to um, you know uh, choose from uh, typically if you are on an exploratory phase where you are trying new things you don't know whether you will fail or succeed and this is basically uh, doing a, a, a lot to do with research you uh, you apply the exploratory life cycle a standard scrum approach or something similar use the agile life cycle and if you want to service a product even after delivery look at continuous delivery agile similarly lean for a devops environment lean continuous delivery is again uh, you know looking at it beyond and then there is a program life cycle which is available now um, how is this life cycle different okay uh, for many of you who come from scrum methodology and all that you are, you start talking about requirements as user stories and you talk about putting them into a product backlog so in scrum methodology we start our discussion with the product backlog and then we end with delivering the product right but in an organization there are a lot of steps even before you come into a product backlog right for example uh, every organization has got a organizational vision number one number two each organizational 
uh, vision uh, is basically broken into one or two or three product goals or organizational goals okay to uh, to achieve this organizational goal you might either engage in building a product or building a set of products and services now once you have decided that these are the set of products i will build to achieve this organizational vision then you go ahead and you break each product into uh, you know um, features and functionality and then you look at how each feature can be uh, broken into their peaks and user stories and all that right this entire thing happens during the inception phase of an organization right once once this is done uh, and none of the methodologies talk about this none of the methodologies talk about you know vision product vision product uh, you know uh, breaking down that vision into release goals into um, the into various releases and then release will have multiple sprints they don't talk about that and here uh, there is a lot of importance given to what we call as an inception phase so a typical uh, life cycle is broken into an inception phase construction phase construction phase is where you are actually executing the consumable solution and bringing functionality into uh, you know uh, out into open or deploying a product um, and transition is where you uh, once you have developed the product you uh, de you know deploy it to the customer so these are the three stages or uh, you know uh, phases where you are adopting uh, the various tools right so so this should give you a fair idea of how we could do this so um when you talk about a uh, da uh, there is one particular uh, solution which uh, uh, which is called the da flex and the da flex is something that is going to be um, basically introduced into the market at the end of this year and this is more to do with the pd sa plan do study act or uh, what was earlier the pdca from uh, deming right and um, it has become plan do study act and it talks a lot, it it is very much focused on value stream mapping and uh, in this we take an organizational approach every organization has a set of organizational vision to execute the organizational vision you have some organizational strategies measures and inventory in initiatives and to you know uh, uh, to ensure that you are able to follow that you might have a huge portfolio management in place within the portfolio management you might have products the various products will have product management and then in the product management the first thing that happens is you start development intake you do planning your resource planning and then you start executing sprints the sprints could be program increments as what you do and save or it could be uh, you know uh, grooming of the backlog and once you have gone through a development phase you might be giving a release the release goal uh, you know uh, basically is uh, deployed into a solution and the solution is basically uh, you know uh, gives feedback from the customer so you get feedback from your customer and based on the feedback you do a inspect and adapt okay basically you inspect what is being developed and accordingly you will adapt you will learn and you will adapt and you will make adjustment this entire thing is called a da flex flex is a solution which is which is soon to be released within da uh, just as uh, you know um, just to let you know that this is also coming in place and uh, this would make a lot of sense for enterprise organizations to adopt disciplined agile as a toolkit okay it it is not a replacement for your existing process but it is a toolkit 
that you can use as a supplement for your existing agile practice okay and yeah we talked about portfolio management and product management disciplined agile devops various places where you will apply the various um, uh, you know uh, process blades which you are seeing on the system so choosing your wow is very essential and that's where we are talking about and uh, another challenge that organizations are facing is you know uh, they feel that agile will solve everything okay agile is a silver bullet they think that and uh, which is not true right um, agile is never a silver bullet and it is also you know at at times uh, certain methodologies are so constraining in nature that, that you are not able to get the maximum efficiency from the system um, now um, these are the key questions that you need to ask yourself and uh, if you are you know if you have sufficient skilled uh, people in your team or if you know whatever is being prescribed for example if your team is following safe or following scrum uh, is it is it you know uh, enough is it enough from a from your organizational context so these are certain questions that are there when it comes to frameworks and where and if the answer is that you feel you are short then a toolkit is definitely essential so we talk about um, any deployment any framework uh, when you initially adopt the framework your productivity you initially goes down because your team is learning that's where you get the initial dip in the learning curve but as your team starts understanding the uh, dynamics of a particular methodology you will start uh, reaping the productivity from that particular methodology right and uh, that will help you increase your method uh, you know productivity uh, to a certain extent and statistics reveals that whenever you adopt certain agile uh, methods you will be able to improve your productivity by 7 to 12 percent similarly if you are adopting a scaling framework you should be able to uh, get a leap of three to five percent more productivity on an average and but then um, you know the methodology by itself is limiting in nature that you will plateau you will get into a straight line after you hit a particular level and this has been found as a major finding from uh, you know observations across 1500 agile teams in uh, you know 150 organizations by uh, you know um, by refer refer is the person who's done this survey in early in 2017 and it has been found to be uh, you know very limiting in nature and that is where um, you know um, the solution which um, da talks about right uh, da talks about uh, you know uh, not just having success doesn't come by adopting a prescriptive framework such as scrum or safe although it is a good start but for achieving true agility you need to look at choosing your way of working right we talk about that and that is when we talk about a kaizen loop kaizen comes from the lean school of thought uh, lean is basically from the toyota production system and um, basically we talk about uh, you know identifying a problem and uh, then trying to fit certain potential solutions and then pick up one solution and try to implement that solution across and see its effectiveness once you have ap applied adopt what works for you 
and if it doesn't work for you i'd abandon that and once you have done that share your learnings and this is from the lean school of thought what da did is da picked up this particular uh, you know um, approach into and tweaked it a little bit and made what is called as guided continuous uh, improvement right uh, we will talk about um, uh, that in later slide and this entire case and loop is adopting what we call as uh, you know plan do study act so yeah so with uh, when you apply a case and loop you will find that uh, you know um, uh, organizations and teams are able to uh, pick up uh, you know uh, pick up their productivity after an initial small dip and things become much more effective over a period of time right and uh, with guided continuous improvement uh, the word guided why it is added to uh, an existing system is that you know we have what we call as process goals within da okay? um i will i will show you a, a slide where uh, a, you know a process goal has some guidance and uh, so these guidances are provided and from that guidance you can pick up one or two solution and you can assess its effectiveness and if you feel that is relevant for you and it improves your uh, productivity then it becomes a source of improvement and that by itself is the is what we are talking about as guided continuous improvement right and as i told you if there are three things that you know you want to pick up from da first is the you know looking at uh, it as a toolkit second the wow um, finding your wow and the third is the guided continuous improvement so uh, yeah so we can do this if we have access to a process knowledge base right the knowledge base is what is given by the toolkit <clears throat> and usually the agile coach helps you with this particular process uh, there are two ways of approaching uh, how to use a guided continuous improvement first thing read the book okay read the book uh, choosing your wow end to end and uh, that is one way of finding what will help you uh, improve your existing uh, process number one or get help from an agile coach uh, somebody who is certified who can help you through this process right now for an example of you know uh, how you can uh, use the toolkit right here are um, uh, here is one particular process goal called exploring scope right and uh, we want to understand uh, currently the teams are using epics epic by default is bolded uh, in the top right and that is the default most favored method uh, that is being used or most favored tool that is being used to improve or explore your scope now if you, you want to see if there are any alternates that we can have the alternates are you can either use user stories or you can use persona a persona will be able to give you customer journeys right and that is one way of tracking and this is what disciplined agile says now if you want to look at a particular place there are a list of options which are there for example you want to improve explore usage and currently we are using epic then you have seven more options one option is outcome second option is and uh, you know uh, looking at personas third option usage scenarios use cases user stories user story mapping all these are options which are there within disciplined agile right and which will help you to 
improve based on what you deploy and see that uh, whether it brings you relevant productivity so you you try to apply persona and uh, what does persona do a complete description about that is available uh, use as a technique to build empathy for users or real people and to understand how uh, you know user experiences are uh, perceived across a system and it is useful uh, you know in various methods so a complete detail is given you can use it to either improve your existing process if you find that it is not relevant for you you can drop it and pick up another tool from the toolkit so this is the approach what happens by doing something like that is whatever improvement that you used to get from kaizen this brings a, a much steeper productivity increase okay the dotted line is what you get when you apply kaizen and that is never guided right uh, that is based on you try based on your knowledge your experience certain initiatives whether it works but with da we are giving a guided continuous improvement where you can pick up certain recommended tools for certain process goals and this will lead to a drastic increase in your productivity and team efficiency right so so as i was telling you right when you are applying a methodology after some time you get uh, you get to a plateau right initially you get a dip and then there is a massive increase in your productivity and after some time the productivity becomes very flat right and but when you do a guided uh, continuous improvement the green line starts kicking in right uh, the green line immediately ensures that it increases your productivity so you are able to improve on your existing practice as well it helps you to come out of your method prison right so in summary um, let's talk about it agile uh, disciplined agile is a rich comprehensive well organized toolkit of strategies that help your organization be more successful with agile and it is very agnostic in nature it uh, it has a very professional and enterprise approach to agile practice and uh, this has been very much lacking in the industry so far so far we are we, it has been utter chaos um if you want to understand more i would suggest go to google look for agile landscape and search images okay you'll find one big map that map will have at least uh, 300 to 400 uh, different ways in which the agile has evolved because Uh, agile is very flexible right and that flexibility by itself is becoming a big constraint uh, for us and uh, with da uh, as a toolkit you will be able to help yourself with you know ease or win with your existing agile practice right understand your options from this and how you can use the tools in the different context and this will lead to better decisions thank you uh, if you have any questions uh, please let us know thank you sir i know you've only just scratched the surface of disciplined agile but a Absolutely. lot of interesting concepts have come out and uh, you know your three essential points to consider for disciplined agile i think those are very very useful uh, i'm sure this session would have really benefited a lot of people who attended this um Can, can I make an announcement so that will give you some chance to take a breath and maybe get a glass of water? So I'll make a quick announcement to the members who are uh, online now, and then I'll we'll get to the questions and answers section. Uh, the announcement I'd like to make is uh, PMI Chennai chapter in association with uh, the Info Career Limited, uh, which is an authorized training provider for disciplined agile, will be conducting a 
disciplined agile course that will cover the concepts uh, of lean and disciplined agile over two days this is a paid course and at the end uh, you will be a certified disciplined agilist uh, and also eventually leading to disciplined agile lean scrum master um, uh, by the end of the year i think that's the objective of this uh, course uh, there is a discount for chapter members so uh, those of you uh, who are interested please get in touch with me or you can directly call info career and do mention that you are a member of the pmi chennai chapter to avail the the discount uh, there will be seven pdus that will be awarded um, for for this course that you take uh, for disciplined agile um, so if you're looking to get into the disciplined agile um, uh, you know you want to get um, an understanding and in-depth knowledge of this i think this is your best option and it's uh, it will give you an early advantage uh, certainly because the course uh, will be uh, definitely an eye opener for you uh, on that note uh, side are you ready to take on some questions please yes yes um, so let uh, me go through uh, you know uh, the list of questions that are there uh, on the chat window right um, so pdsa cycle by uh, stuart uh, was modified as pdca by edward yes yes correct and um, is there any successful experience story of disciplined agile in application like school education in COVID-19 yeah. situation uh, exploratory approaches taken uh, the answer is no shakily because uh, disciplined agile is a very recent baby and we don't have anything uh, that we could talk about from the education sector but off late um, since the early 2020 hsbc has implemented disciplined agile as a toolkit for their existing agile practice in india and it has been a, a big success story and maybe i can share some links about that uh, at a later point in time right so this is one uh, answer now ravi shegar has a question saying that an enterprise already implemented safe and safe is already part of the uh, you know as a disciplined agile what are the further advantages for the organization to adopt da okay let me answer the second part of the question because the first part is a bit confusing the second part is see so if an organization has already adopted safe uh, what PMI recommends is that we will not disturb it. Okay, we will not disturb any part of it. We will basically provide a toolkit. The toolkit is something that you can pick it up, go deploy it within your existing safe practice and see whether certain tools bring improved productivity. Okay, and I have seen this in as a first hand knowledge of having applied this across in some of my uh, engagements also right i come from a safe implementation background and uh, uh, this is for a, a large financial organization and uh, and today we are applying disciplined agile on the hr front of that organization right uh, so uh, let me set the uh, context here. See, we talk a lot about uh, engineering organizations uh, practicing agile and all that, and that by itself is in silo, right? How do you ensure the entire organization achieves true agility? So, so to achieve that true agility, your other departments also should adopt agile, right? And that is one place where none of the previous methodologies uh, talk about how you can implement agile in the different departments and that is one place where da wins hands down right so so that i would recommend that uh, you have a look at it uh, this is to answer ravi shaker okay and how um, okay so uh, sharif how does process blades create an impact on epc projects 
and can it enable efficient project execution um to tell you frankly sharif we don't have answers yet uh, this is an emerging uh, you know uh, baby that has come and uh, we have used it across in uh, you know development software development industries for now we have excellent case studies from uh, two banks one insurance organization globally and uh, a few uh, fmcg companies we haven't looked at epc epc still continues to be uh, you know uh, the darling of uh, pm book of knowledge uh, so uh, so um, that's that's my answer here and um, shanta kumar looks like da is more inclined to absolutely yes absolutely yes da is more inclined to it sector and what is the framework for engineering and r and d um, projects right uh, yeah the, i think uh, you should go back and look at my presentation shanta kumar because uh, what we are saying is we are not recommending that this is the methodology what we are saying is here is a toolkit now uh, whatever methodology you are following we don't want to disturb that but what we are saying is here's a toolkit go apply certain tools from this toolkit for your existing practice and try to bring improvement in your productivity so that is the approach and the the best thing that i see is look at the exploratory life cycle that we are talking about there are six life cycles which are available uh, you know look at the exploratory life cycle if you are in an r and d project that might help you understand how you can improve productivity okay can you please share some case studies that um, uh, that use da absolutely right uh, we can do that uh, there are six uh, large scale case studies that are available uh, one is as i said uh, you know um, the uh, the bank that we talked about and uh, uh, then there is another bank uh, there's an uh, you know i i can share you these uh, case studies yeah and uh, with that not many questions yeah we have done with all the questions here uh, any other questions thanks sir i was just going to go through some of them with you but you've already done a fabulous job uh, i've got one general question many have asked about what certifications are available for disciplined agile please can you shed some light on that uh, okay so there are uh, the uh, first thing uh, there is a basic level of uh, certification which is called disciplined agilist da okay uh, da is the uh, you know uh, most basic one and the essential one it's a two day course uh, which leads towards uh, you know uh, prepare, preparation uh, for the exam and once you write your exam uh, exam is typically uh, 100 questions and uh, uh, so you go through that and uh, then um, they look for whether you have experience in agile if you have more than 4 years of experience in agile then you can and it has to be a verifiable experience then you get um, cdap certified disciplined agile professional and then if you have uh, experience of training people training people on agile like trainers and all that you will get to be a cdai in between you also have something called lean scrum master okay so first level certified disciplined agilist second level certified disciplined agile professional third level certified disciplined agile lean scrum master fourth level disciplined agile instructor okay and uh, these are the various levels that are there in the exam and there was one more question though everyone is going agile these days a common complaint is that agile doesn't scale well revathi krishnan and that is what i am saying from the entire session right how to overcome yeah revathi this is what i am saying uh, all along right uh, everybody feels that you know 
agile will make wonders agile is a silver bullet that will uh, you know uh, one medicine and all your pain will be gone actually it is not so when you actually go and implement agile you will find it so constraining in certain areas you will find immediate productivity or quick wins are always there but uh, slowly you would find that it is constraining in nature and and you get stuck to what is called as a method prism uh, look for this word method prism p r i s o n okay you get stuck to it and uh, and that is one place where a da toolkit is liberating in nature okay so i would suggest uh, and, and that's the reason why i feel the da will be adopted in a much wider larger uh, manner across enterprises now yeah other than that i think you've covered everything sir um okay. there, there was one uh, maybe uh, if this is possible to answer in maybe a couple of sentences a very quick and brief difference between safe and agile safe, safe sorry i mean method. safe and disciplined yeah agile. safe is a methodology um disciplined agile is not it's a toolkit that's the very simple answer because safe uh, we talk we talk about it right from pi planning we talk about agile release trains we talk about value stream mapping and or, you know continuous uh, exploration continuous uh, integration continuous deployment while uh, da is a toolkit it has around 60 tools right and um, so we use that and uh, and what uh, you know pmi recommends is if you are using safe please continue to use safe okay but use the toolkit to enhance the productivity of your existing team that is what we say we never say discontinue safe and use the new one we don't say that yeah excellent thank you sayed for such a wonderful engaging Uh, and an extremely in informative session um so on behalf of the chapter members a big thank you to you um just as a memento i've shared on my screen um a souvenir so if you could maybe share this um on the social media platforms would be very grateful um as a closing remark i wanted to make an announcement this is a specific request from vp certification sivaram there is a pmp Uh, and beyond course that's starting on the 14 sorry 15th of august so please do get in touch with sivaram if you have anybody uh, who you think can benefit from this course uh, so on that note thanks everyone uh, for joining this session uh, and a very big thank you to sayed have a wonderful evening all of you thank you all good evening thank Bye. you thank you sayed and thank you vijay Thank, thank you, you. Thanks, thank you all okay, thank you so much thank okay. you sir and team yeah thank you